Okay, that was a bunch of stuff about events that have happened, but let's talk about what's coming up. Yep, so um, just a little bits of news here and there. So one of the events, the main events that's coming up soon, uh, Southern California Regionals, a.k.a. SCR, coming up uh, two weekends from now. Yeah. Uh, Axis Games actually just announced that they're providing an extra $500 in pop bonus to the three games that are being played there, Exerd Sign, Guilty Gear Exerd Sign, Blaze Blue, Chrono Phantasma Extend, and Undernight in Birth EXE Late will all be getting an extra five hundred dollars. So okay. they're adding fifteen hundred total to the pot. So, and of course that is a premier event, so whoever wins that will qualify. Yeah. Um, also, another premier event, this one taking place in Japan. Mm. Uh, the tight, uh, Taito reveals brackets. They just revealed the brackets for the Ultra Hyakishu Cup. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Oh well. But um, apparently they have eight blocks of players. I don't know. I guess they just released the blocks, but not necessarily the bracket, maybe. But um, I mean, again, it's just Ooh. it's it's just it's a some good ones in there. I see. Yeah. So for example, the A block has Pugera, Fudo's in there as well. Uh, Oji San is in there. Harumi Score Dunhill is in there. <laughs> Very good Tanaka. <laughs> is there a lot of good players there? Yeah, you just mentioned Twiggy and Oji San. Yeah, I, I mentioned Oji San. Okay, yeah, yeah, those are good players. That yeah. is for sure. Um, in the B block, uh. Kichi Joji Ken is there, Gonzalez is there, Santaru is there, Hyde Buffy is there, Matsuri, um, Kawaguchi is there. So, it's gonna be a stacked one, that's for sure. Yeah, like the Seabrack. Uh, yeah, you can look through it yourself yeah, as yeah. well. Uh, this is all on uh, showrikin.com, but 128 player bracket, so I'm wondering if this one also is a capped tournament as well. So. But that is uh, going to be a crazy, crazy, crazy tournament. That's uh, October 17th, yeah? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, before that, don't, remember, don't forget about the CPT Brazil uh, event, mm, which is okay. on uh, the 10th, October 10th through 12th. It's at Brazil Game Show, right? Okay. okay. For, so, yeah, at Brazil Game Show. So okay. make sure to check that one out, too. Uh, also coming up this weekend here, um, the Big House 5 is taking place this weekend. This is a really large Smash tournament. In fact, I heard that like outside of EVO and Apex, it might have reached the largest Smash Melee tournament. Same. It's somewhere up there now. I okay. see a bunch of people tweeting about it and talking about that it's become one of the, that it has like one of the largest entries. And so this is going to be a pretty major Smash Brothers tournament that's coming up. That's going to be taking place in Dearborn, Michigan ah. this weekend. Oops, why did I close that tab? I just wanted to let you guys know who's streaming it. It will be streamed on VG Bootcamp, uh, Showdown Smash, and Tourney Locator, all on Twitch.tv. Cool. Oh, so some people are saying it might even... Oh, it's the second biggest of all time, someone so says in the chat. Apex, I guess. So it might have be Apex then, yeah. Rad. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Okay. Good stuff to them, though. Good stuff to the Smashing. Of course. Always growing, always continuing Very to grow. Very impressive. Um, then there is the Fighting Championship, which is taking place in Shichuan, uh, China, Chengdu. Uh, this is a Pro Tour Asia qualifier. Gotcha. So um, I don't have any information on who's streaming it. Okay. But you can find information if you go to www.beastapac.com. Slash CPT ACDC and Qualls. Okay. So that's, yeah. Just go to tinyurl.com slash FGC calendar. Indeed. As usual. So, um, but that is taking place in China. So, a, a qualifier directly from there. Shin actually tweeted out a picture of everyone who's qualified so far. I'm going to have to pull that up in just a second. I'll, I'll look for that in a second. Um, then in Amsterdam, oh. Netherlands. Red Fight District, Ooh, yeah. uh, which has been going on for quite some time now. For sure. Which is going to include Ultra Street Fighter 4, MKX, UMVC 3, nice. Tekken Tag 2, Guilty Gear Exert, KI. Um, you can check that out. Information, redfightdistrict.com. Uh, no information on who's streaming this one. Check out the uh, Just, website yeah. there. Oh, yeah, that's it's a good redfightdistrict.com. Uh, let's check out the Facebook page as well. But this will be taking place as well. On Saturday, October 3rd through Sunday, October 4th, uh, again in Amsterdam. 
see here if they have any information because everyone always puts who's streaming the event directly on the front page because that's the best thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Wait, scroll up just slightly. Well, there's a schedule, but it's not a stream schedule this time. Yes. Uh, let's check oh, the Facebook well. page here. Let's do about. Red Fight District. Price range, two dollar signs. Maybe, maybe it's just that uh, they're actually doing it themselves or something like that. I I'm not sure. I don't have the streaming information, unfortunately. So, uh, but also taking place in Poland at the Atlas Arena in Banduskiego, Poland. Oh, you don't want to attempt the city name, huh? Oh, that? that I, I thought that was like improperly translated text, you know, how that should do. Uh, Can you pronounce that? In it? No, it's, it's. I mean, in English you just say it's loads, but... Loads. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 knew, I knew a Polish dude. The way that they pronounce that L, I'm not even going to try it, but it's very interesting. Uh -huh. It's just a really interestingly pronounced okay, letter. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but this is taking place in Poland. Um, trying to see if there's any information on which games it will be played. Oh yeah, there we go. Tekken Tag 2, Mortal Kombat X, and Guilty Gear Xer listed there as games being played. Interesting set of games there. No Street Fighter, no Melee. Sick. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And uh, this one is actually going to be streamed on hitbox.tv slash fgc-poland. Cool, that's awesome. So there awesome. you go. If you want to check out some of that uh, Poland scene, that's, that's, that's super cool. Again, always want to see more of these scenes all around the world. But um, at next level in Brooklyn, New York, ah. Team Stickbug continues his tournaments. He's got Exerd and Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend. Going there, going to be streamed on NYC Furby, so I'm guessing Arturo is just going to be streaming that. But there's going to be a lot of people being flown out there. Uh, Nakiel is going out there, Kid Viper, Black Snake from the Midwest, uh, Kid Viper, of course, from uh, Texas area, and GC Yoshi from NorCal mm -hmm. are all being flown out there. So that's, that's super cool. Definitely that is check cool. that out. That's going to be this weekend, only on Saturday from 1 p.m. to 11 p.m twitch.tv slash nyc for me. That's right. And then finally, um, probably a big cool. big event here. Remember, we've talked about the King of the Iron Fist tournament, you know, basically the Namco Cup for Tekken 7 that's coming out. Um, only a few places have Tekken 7 right yeah. now. One of them is uh, the Round 1 Arcade in Puente Hills, in the Puente Hills Mall in Roland Heights here in Southern California. They are having one of the two U.S. qualifiers for the King of the Iron uh, Cup, King of the Iron Fist tournament, yeah. um, and this is going to be one of them here. The other one's going to be in New York at the Dave and Buster's, but they are both going to be streamed by Team Spooky. So Spooky is actually flying out here ah. this weekend, and he will be streaming the King of the Iron Fist uh, qualifier at Ooh. Round One Arcade. So check that out: Twitch.tv/TeamSpooky, and that's Spooky with two zeros. If you, if you crawl out of a rock and decided to watch us on the fighting game stream... Yeah, somehow you're no watching Ultra Chen without knowing what Team Spooky is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think it works like that. So, yeah. So, uh, again, he will also be doing the New York qualifiers as well. Awesome. So that's all coming up this weekend. The Tekken is a one-day event. Again, it's going to be starting at 4 p.m. in Southern California. So definitely check out all of those events coming up. And uh, that's all I have for upcoming events. We okay. can move on to some game news. Sure. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So, uh, one thing I want to talk about in game news, I mean, this is more community news, but uh, we've talked about before, speaking of Team Spooky, yeah. we've been promoting a lot of the Marvel Live podcast that's been going on recently. Really cool stuff that they, those guys, uh, Kinder Party and a bunch of other guys, have mm -hmm. been doing. Um, they just announced at Absolute Battle that they now have a partnership with Team Spooky so that the Marvel Live podcast, when they stream it, is actually going to be streamed on Team Spooky's channel. So you'll be able to listen in on Team Spooky. So that's actually Very really nice. big for them because that'll get them a lot of, that's awesome. lot of listeners and such. And again, check them out at the Marvel Essentials website at Marvel Lives. 
twitch.com. Well, so, what was the time slot for that stream? It's going to be on Twitch every first and third Tuesday. Used to be on Mondays, but now it's on the first and third Tuesday every month at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, so it'll be right before Capcom Pro, Capcom Talk. Pro Talk, which is a little bit right before our thing. Yes, so Tuesday's bl leading up to be the talk show. It, remember, it has been in the past. Yeah, like, there have uh, been times when it was the thing, there was like Wake Up SRK, and there was... There was the... There the, was the... the uh, uh, pro, uh, what are... Cross, cross Counter, counter live, right? And then, of course, there was also um, the show that sucks. Sure. Yeah, so it looks like Tuesday is returning back to its awesome um, podcast game show talk game uh, fighting game talk show uh, status here. Cool. Uh, Killer Instinct also announced that they just released a new patch to fix a bunch of bugs. I don't think that there's really any sort of um, uh, character changes or anything like that. Oh, I nope, guess there, there is are. a few character throw ch uh, character changes. Mostly bugs, it looks like. In there. Fixes. But uh, they also did add the ability to use Konra, Agonos, and Hisako into the Shadow Lab, which I believe is that thing where you can train them to fight you and stuff right. like that. So you can actually learn how to fight the character. So good to see them uh, so keep them on supporting this game. Of course, remember of course. Season 2 was an, um, Season 3. I should say it was announced yeah. and it will be coming out on PC in 2016 at some point in time so the Killer Instinct train rolls on and definitely a reason to continue playing the game. So, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, also Skullgirls Encore was included in the latest Humble Bundle Yeah. so you can get it there but more importantly it is now playable on Mac and Linux. Definitely more importantly for 1% of PC gamers this guy <laughs> you want to play on Linux now you can do it. Yep exactly or Mac <laughs> so you're happy about the Linux part I'm, I'm happy about the Mac part but yeah so it's definitely uh, playable on those platforms Shout out to them supporting. Like Skullgirls is really doing a good job supporting pretty much every platform on oh, the sauce. Because awesome. they're also awesome. on the Vita, they're on the PS4, they're on PlayStation 3, they're on Xbox 360, they're on Steam, they're pretty much everywhere you can think of. So good job. Good jobs to them. And then uh, we've been talking about a little bit the MLP Fighting is Magic game, which has now been rebirthed as Them's Fighting Herds. Uh, is continuing their campaign, their Indiegogo campaign. They just released a brand new character named Tianhuo, which I was told means, you know, like a sky fire kind of a th situation. So if that's what it is, then that was my feeble attempt at pronouncing it correctly. Uh, but is a half dragon, half horse, I think it is. Uh, but they are definitely continuing their campaign on Indiegogo, so definitely check that out. Uh, they've raised quite a bit of money already, yeah. but they've got a lot more to go because 436000 is their goal. And you know what? I actually appreciate them putting it to 46000 yeah. because a lot of those companies are putting out like, we just need to get to 50, that, you know, that's not how much it takes to make a game. For sure. And it's kind of misleading because people are like, oh, look, you know, I can make a game for $50,000. No, you can't make a Ooh. game. It's just that they have... Very, very hard to do. They actually have publishers. They have people willing to put money into it. They just need proof of concept. So they throw the Kickstarter together to get the proof of concept. And then that's what it's for. And then it's funded the rest through normal game funding needs. But I have a funny feeling them, Them's Fighting Herds doesn't have that kind of uh, support just yet. So $436,000 is their goal of which they have reached uh, pretty far. Uh, let me actually see if I can uh, see where they're at right now. Oh, it said 100 and something. Oh, yeah, at the time that they published right. that article. So right now, they're almost at 200,000. So they're at 197, 111. That's cool. So 45%. So shout out to them. Shout out to them. Good stuff. So. Um, but that's all the upcoming game news that I have. Okay. Um, if you want to move on to some other topics. So, um, uh, let's take a break. Sure, no problem. Okay, we'll take a break and we will be right back. Okay, welcome back to the Tuesday again. Talk about uh, some other news that's going on. Yep, so um, just recently, um, a new player, a new, a new challenger has entered the ring. Um, D-Link 
a networking company. I've owned many D-Link hubs and D-Link uh, routers and such like that. Uh, they've just recently signed Lord Knight. Yeah. So uh, Lord Knight, who was always kind of officially, unofficially part of Team Spooky, but now I guess he's going to be DL Lord Knight. That's awesome. I can't think of anybody in anime games, certainly, and, and just general broader fighting game community um, who should be sponsored more because he does he's so everywhere. well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he goes, he goes all over the place. He does well in multiple games. Mm -hmm. uh, winning multiple games has done great at EVO in the past. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Very nice guy. I mean, he's, I think he's a really great pickup. Yeah, I think that's super cool. Um, again, curious to see where D-Link wants to go. I, I know they've been trying to get into a few more esports things. Uh, I just saw a list recently of some of the stuff that they've gotten into recently with esports and such. So, I mean, look, esports is getting big now, and it kills me that I have to keep calling it esports now, but it's too late. It's too late, man. We it's lost that. Yeah, that we, war is over. We, we lost. Yeah, there's, there's nothing to do with it. I still time. mostly refrain from saying it. It's like it's like when you know when you have known somebody for a while, but you're not sure what their name is, so you try to work around saying their name <laughs> all the time. Like it's that sort of machination that goes on in my head to like avoid saying your right, sports right, now. Right, right. Yeah, I yeah. just don't I feel bad. Good stuff, good it's stuff. Weird. Like when you're like, Hey, what's up, good sir? Yeah. <laughs> good sir. What's yeah. up, buddy? <laughs> but exactly right. Yeah. I agree with him. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> You know what he said. <laughs> uh, Esports. But, yeah. But, but the sad news on the opposite side of the spectrum is a uh, Korean DJ, uh, a, a very strong Smash player who was signed to Team Liquid along with um, with Ken, Sephiroth Ken, uh, at one point in time. He's actually retiring from competitive melee, so he's leaving. Uh, Team Liquid now and he mentioned that one of the main reasons why he's leaving it is you know He he wants to do other things, but mostly a lot of it comes from the fact that he's been battling a lot of hand injuries You know, and it's just kind of one of those little I mean I started talking about this a lot on Twitter because it just when it when I read it I was just like this really sucks, you know, but it's just one of those situations where it's a good reminder that you know pro gaming is can be fleeting. I mean, anything sure. can be that way. I mean, dude, freaking Derek Rose just got elbowed in the face during a practice game, and now his cheekbone is broken or something like that, and he needs surgery. That guy is made of glass, dude. Derek Rose cannot catch a break. That sucks. That guy is like, he's like, he's like Samuel injury. L. Jackson in Unbreakable. You know, I mean, seriously, that guy. But I mean, like any, any, anything, it's fleeting, right? But yeah. so, in other words. It's just one of those situations where even if you are into fighting games and if you are a really strong player and you're trying to bank everything on becoming a pro fighting, a pro video game player of any kind, it's actually kind of an interesting situation because right now, like, you could be Derek Rose and you get injured and let's say you have a career-ending injury, right? Knock on wood, I never want that course, to happen yeah. to him. But he can move to the analyst desk. He can do all sorts of things in the NBA. He can become a coach. He can become an assistant coach right now. Right now, in general, the world doesn't recognize esports. Yeah. So if you're a pro player and you go, <laughs> sorry. No, no, it has, to, it has to be said. If you're a pro player and let's say you have a career ending injury or something happens, you can't really go up to somebody and be like, look, I was a pro Street Fighter player. I was sponsored by Team Evil Geniuses. Yeah. And it's it's not doesn't carry the same weight right now. For and, sure. And the fighting game community isn't quite there yet where we can support ourselves, which is why I always want the fighting game community to get there by ourselves without yeah. like going MLG routes or whatever, because that's what I want. I want it to the point where someone like her Korean DJ can be like, you know what, I'm done with the competitive aspect of it, but now I'm going to be a commentator, or now I can be a coach, or now I can yeah. be this guy. But the problem is we don't have a lot of those yeah, roles sure. yet, you know. And so, um, you know, I even tweeted at him, like, I hope he sticks it around in the community if he stops competing. If he can be a, re he'd be an amazing an analyst because he's always been such a great Makes player. Sense. He'd be able to do a lot of very good things for the community. So I hope he sticks around with the community. 
And, you know, I told him, speaking from experience, it's really hard to leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very hard to leave. So. Yeah, especially if you leave on that, that kind of circumstance. If you if you leave, because like, this just happened to one of my buddies. Um, yeah, Mega Man, who oh. uh, doesn't play games anymore. Really? And it's like, it, he didn't, like, put out a big old message, Hey, everybody, later, <laughs> I'm quitting forever. Right. It was just like... It became less important to him. He's got other stuff going on. Yeah, uh -huh, he's moving. Uh -huh. You know, he just doesn't do it anymore. That's the people who leave. Yeah. The people who mm -hmm. who are f sort of forced out of it in a way that they would rather not be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That competitive spark is not something that leaves easily. It really is not. Like, it le if it leaves it on its own, different story. But yeah, yeah. I if, mean, if you get forced out of it, ooh, it's a hard pill to swallow. Or even if it's just one of those things where you just like try to make a hard decision, aka the PR Balrog story, right? You know, like after this year, I'm done. And no, it just <laughs> didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, it is really important. And, you know, it's really interesting too because honestly, hand injuries I feel like have plagued the melee players more than any other. It seems like, like yeah. I know Mewtwo King has had some hand problems and stuff like that. Dude, that game... Hacks. Yeah, that GameCube controller was not meant to be used the way that people are using that thing. I think you're right. Because it's like... Yeah, it's a super weird... It's like carpal yeah. tunnel, like, yeah. Yeah, death it's, it's right there. Yeah. yeah, and especially... Someone actually said they took the spring out of the button they used to, to do L-canceling, so you don't have to push it as hard. Pretty common, they, right? Yeah, and then they use the other button for the light shield because you need the analog ability, right? But for L canceling, you just need to be able to hit that thing as fast. So they like weaken the spring so it's very easy to hit and stuff like that. It actually sounds like a good idea. A lot of people are talking about hand exercises, you know, making yeah. sure you do stretches and things like that. I had a ton of people even messaging me that even when they play on the joystick, which I would assume is way less painful on your hands than, than, than a GameCube controller. A lot of people were even telling me that even on joystick after they play for a few hours, their hand hurts like hell and all these things wow. like that. And, you know, it's really unfortunate for the melee scene because, like, I, I, I tweeted it out before I even thought about it. I was like, you should probably start looking to some alternatives. And then after, to melee? Yeah, for melee, for some co other controllers that are oh. more ergonomic. And then I was like, there are no alternatives. <laughs> they just don't exist. Yeah, stick doesn't really work in the same way. Yeah, and, 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 and no one's making controllers for GameCube anymore. Uh, yeah. Right? Like, I actually think the Wii U Pro Controller is a little more comfortable, a little more ergonomic, right? So you can play on that, but, I mean, it's not like you can use that on a GameCube, sure. right? So it's kind of unfortunate. And so. it's, hard, it's hard to play on the same type of input system for 15 years and then move away from it. Right, exactly. I mean, exactly. it's not easy for Anybody. old people to move away from stick, etc. Yeah. I mean, just whatever your thing is. Dude, John Choi is still using that freaking moss stick. Dude. Yeah, and dude, the, with the gross glue inside. You ever open those things up? Oh. No, like I think it's like the perfect 360 still yeah. or something like that. I don't know. Big old hat competitions. Dude, so if people don't know about this, joystick tightness was a huge thing back then. You either had, you either were the kind of guy who liked loose joysticks, or you liked that joystick that like you got to work out. When there you were did some that. that were you had to move it. That's you, like you were using like the back muscle. Uh -huh. That's John Choi style right, right. there. And because a lot of arcades had it that way yeah. that you had to get used to it. That's why John Choi still plays on the ground because the amount of strength that you need to push the joystick if you put it on your lap like the joystick will move off your lap before you can move the joystick to up unlike a lot of the mad cat sticks and such like that. So that's why you got to play on the ground. So yeah. Yeah. When, <laughs> when, when you when you would pull back the stick and it was too tight and you let go, it would on its own go to forward because it like <laughs> so fast, <laughs> boom, all the way to forward before yep, I go back. Yep. Man. Mm -hmm. Anyway, presumably his hand issue is not the same thing that I have because I don't have a hand issue. I have a nerve issue. Right. So I don't have yeah, any yeah, hand yeah. issues at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure what that's like. I don't have the, the pain. I'm sure that that it's just got to suck to, to yeah. have it be a fatigue thing. You know, you want to play your game, but you sort of just can't do it over time. I really feel bad for him about that. Or it that. just hurts. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what a lot of situations is. You're just playing and it just, yeah, like, just even it doing kills motions. you to yeah, do that. It's, got, so. it's really got to suck. That's one of the downsides of video games. I mean, I've often said that I want to be playing arcade games. Well, playing video games in the old folks' home. Right. Yeah, yeah, 50 yeah. or uh -huh, 6 years uh -huh. from now, whatever that's going to be. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's not going to be practical. You know, maybe we'll... Maybe more of us will run into these things. It's sort of a <laughs> big experiment, right? Like, how how long until everybody in the world has carpal tunnel? Yeah. Like, is it, uh, 
Dude, 20 so, years or is it 50? I don't know. So Alpha 3 Maybe is, never. is a pretty unforgiving game when it comes to detecting uh, inputs. And especially Armika, her 360, she kind of has like that um, STT Hawk problem. I think she jumps faster, so it's harder to do. Like Zangief 360s in ST are way easier than T Hawk 360s in ST. Yeah, for sure. Like they just have different jump timing, right? So Armika said that night, that day that I sat there and I played Alpha Three on Fight Cave for like, like God, like four or five hours or something like that. Dude, the next day my arms were hurting because I was just like really? spinning pile driver, spinning pile, hitting the button. And then everyone on the chat was like, "Why are you hitting the button so hard?" They thought I was like super mad. Oh, but that's just that's how we how hit buttons. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, five hours in a row, I had not had my arms hurt that bad. Like after five hours of fighting game. Like we've even done that like on some of those MK sessions where we've played like yeah. five hours and I like I like I didn't even feel like that much pain. So. Huh. Yeah. But Well, I'm sorry <laughs> for a Korean DJ. I hope he, he can find some other thing. It mentions that he played violin as well. I hope that that's not also Ooh, affected. Okay, okay. But um, okay. maybe it is. So. Hmm? Anyway, yeah. definitely bad, bad news. Um, as you mentioned, hand exercises can be important. There have been mm -hmm. panels in fact run by people in the melee community. To try to that's show right, yeah. other people in the melee community exercises you can do because they exist. Um, hopefully, that's something that more people take seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, with, yeah. as more and more people, like you said, Mewtwo hacks now, Korean DJ, right. probably other people as well have right, had it. Right. Um, as that becomes more often, I hope people take it more seriously. Yeah, even in the FGC, like I know Angelic has had some hand yeah. problems recently as well. And so yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. So take care. And even going back now. to like Mike Watson, really. Does, has he talked about hand problems before? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't know because I mean, like, when he plays, he still he still bodies people. Yeah, he's still awesome, but it just yeah. uh, you can't do it as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So. Getting old. Getting old. <laughs> It'll um, happen to you. But yeah, I mean, I do. I, I, dude, I, it's so sad. Like I've wanted to stream a lot more. Like I streamed Mario Maker a while ago. That's actually really fun to stream because you can play a lot of the stages from the people in the chat. Yeah, that is, yeah. and stuff like that. But I've wanted to stream more. I just haven't had a chance. I really wanted to stream some Super Turbo on Fightcade. Really wanted to stream that, but I'm scared because Fight Fightcade is a scary place. You want to talk about Fightcade now? <laughs> we can. <laughs> it's a scary place. So, like I said, I played Alpha Three there, dude. Everybody on there is really good. Like, they, they've been continuing playing that game. I got destroyed on Alpha 3. Like, I didn't remember any of the speeds. Like, there's a lot of situations where you're blocking tight block strings and you could jump away in, like, Street Fighter 4. I couldn't jump away. I would uh, actually get hit out of my pre-jump frames by non-low attacks. Like, they would do low strong and I would just get hit on the ground and yeah. stuff like that. I was just like, holy crap. And, yeah, Fight King is brutal, so I'm, like, really scared to go on ST and see what happens when I play there. I haven't played on ST, but I have been playing Third Strike. Right, right, right. I saw you tweet a little bit about that, so... <laughs> it does not go well. Yeah. It does not go well. Yeah. I, I can feel myself that I am bad. <laughs> like, I... Well, look, I'm not going to discount other people being good. Right, right. And it's Presumably online. It's online. There's little bits of online strategy. I mean, obviously. yeah, but it's whatever. Yeah. It's... Mm -hmm. It's just, I feel like the majority of it is me like feeling that I don't remember timings, I don't mm. remember punishes. Um, it's difficult for me to do like very fast motions now. Because mm. I mean, like every time I see you, are, I don't know. like I'll see you play at final round or at TFC and stuff like that, and you do pretty well when you play over there, right? So sometimes, sometimes I do. Dude, I just feel like Fight K is a brutal place. Like I, 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 I feel like I listen to the stupid stuff because that's that's <laughs> that, that's the thing. I'm sure that there are good players, and maybe I've played some good players, but I've also played some players who, not are not good. Okay. okay. I, re I really feel are not good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that I am so much less good that I can't mm. I can't do anything about it. Interesting. Okay. So, okay. But not not being good is weird in Third Strike because. You can win if you're not good in Third Strike. I know everybody Everybody says that Third Strike is a game where you can't win if you're not good. I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I really do not. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from. Yeah. I don't know where that comes yeah, from. Yeah, I really don't understand. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. But 
Anyway, it does not go well usually. I've been, I'm still, I'll still play on there, and I made the idiotic decision to sign up with Ultra David as my oh, name yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. like uh, Bunkin uh, Jones or whatever dude, other nonsense. Okay. So people are always trying to challenge me, and then they're like, as they're destroying me, are you Ultra David in game? And I'm like, please, let's not have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> let's just uh, not let, let me lose in peace. You know, it's funny because I, I even made this comment on Twitter that. When when you're playing and you know people are watching, it really affects your play. That's why playing on stream is tough and everything like that. I wasn't even, like, I was talking about, it like, you know, it really affects your gameplay and you start making lots of dumb errors. I wasn't even talking about fighting games. I, that, I was actually making that in a reference to L.I. Joe playing all the Metal Gear games. Because he kept talking about how, like, he was, like, the worst hider. And, like, he even took some funny photos when he was on vacation in Barbados where he's, like, here's, like, a flower pot, like, a, like a giant flower pot. And he's, like, kneeling on the floor, but he sticks, he's still sticking up halfway past the pot. And he's, like, this is how I hide in Metal Gear. <laughs> you know? Like, but, like, honestly, when people know you, like, it's, it's hard. Because I know when I've played on Xbox Live Arcade, even when I play Ultra Street Fighter 4 on there, if I play as my J. Chenzo account, I play way worse than when I play as my, like, hidden account. Like, when I play with my hidden account, like, I can experiment, I feel more natural, things go differently. I bet you if you created a different Steam account, you'd probably do better. I don't think so. <laughs> I guess I might as well try it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I Like I said, I've always had problems. I mean, people have seen it all the time. Every time I play on stream, I play awful. Like, I'm just bad at that. I did used to happen, yeah. Yeah, so um, I know it affects me. Uh, it's I not as it much a big me, so. deal for me, I, I don't think. But, okay. But I, 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 do, I do feel worse. Like, when I when I lose and somebody knows that it's me, like this human uh -huh. right here, I'm the dude getting my, my butt right, kicked. Right, right. Like, that, that feels differently but i don't feel it makes me play worse oh okay okay because that makes I just me feel like a jerk because <laughs> i had a lot of people when i was playing off of they're like are you really james chen and as soon as they ask that you're like damn <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like damn yeah yeah but i'd be curious to see because super turbo is just one of those games that i feel like i've never forgotten how to it's play it's just part of you yeah it's just part of me so i'd be curious to see how that goes you should try so, it out let me know how it goes yeah so i'll definitely try to stream that a little bit more so i'll try to stream that so okay <laughs> what's the name of my hidden account if i told you it wouldn't be hidden anymore <laughs> so yeah you know there's somebody on steam who's been playing street fighter 4 apparently using the same characters i use who plays as ultra david Dude, someone's been doing that as James Chen or Jay Chenzer as well. Really? I've gotten a lot of people who tweet me like, Good games, James! Yeah, I, I get that too. You on Steam. I bet you it's the same dude. That would be really funny. It's Hanzo so. Gonzo, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because someone's like, Dude, I just played... I thought I played you. You were using Cammy. You are yeah. doing really well. Like, that's how you know it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not good at uh, Cammy and Ultra that's Street Fighter 4. That's so. funny. Yeah, yeah I, I, feel, I feel bad. Somebody's pulling the fast one on people. I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm not gonna like send a season to sis letter, you know. Dude, who was the guy? Who was the guy that was on the chat that always used to say, "I am Ultra David"? There was one guy who used to always pretend that he was like one of your your troll accounts, and uh, maybe that's him playing on Steam. For real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's not me. The one on on Fightcade is me, but. The one on SF4, you'll never guess my name. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if it's you, actually if, impossible. Oh I, really? <laughs> I strongly believe that nobody in the world could pick the name that I have. Mine, if you it's really made the, the the leap in logic, you could guess it was me, because I still need it to be significant to some degree. You might be able to make it, but it's it's a rough one. It's a rough one. Like. Some people who are smart will probably be able to figure it out, so... Okay. But it's not, like, super, super... Like, I actually had a, a, an alternate account on PSN, on the PSN, and most people knew it was me when they played. Because well, I was playing Uniel and I was using Nanase, and, and part of my name is in there, so it was kind of obvious that it yeah. was me. So, but my, my 360, my Xbox Live random account is just, like... Yeah. yeah. You know what I do hate though? I hate that you can't change your name in, on PSN. Like on the on the Xbox Live, you can actually pay money to change your name. Mm. If you you get one time, you can change it for free, and that's what I, I had to do because when you signed up on Xbox 
your stupid Xbox One. When you sign up on the original Xbox, and then you let that count die, you could never get that name back ever again. So when CVS2 was on Xbox, I signed up as Jay Chenzor, and then I let that count die because CVS2 online was booty butt cheeks on the Xbox, the original Xbox. And then when the 360 came out, I couldn't get Jay Chenzor back, so I was Jay Chenzor 360 for the longest of time. And then they finally released all those old accounts, and then I, I switched it for free to Jay Chenzor. Mm. So. But if you want to change it again, then you can pay money to do that. So, yeah. But on PSN, you're you're SOL. You can't change anything. So I like Steam because you can change it as often as you want. Yeah, and that's why there's someone masquerading as us on Steam, yeah. right? So. And you know, it re it records your last ten names. Oh, right? does it? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, you okay, can look okay, at, okay. You look okay. at somebody's history and find it. Right. So right. what I did is I had a previous name that was more obviously me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I wanted to change it to something that was unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. So, rather than changing it once and having it be like, oh, it's still Ultra David, like the second one would be Ultra David. <laughs> that, that would not. That would not do. So I actually changed it ten times, <laughs> so that it would completely go off of the list. You scrolled it off the list. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely need to. Um, I definitely need to uh, try to get on there with some ST, some ST fight cade. So, you know, if, if you are interested in any of those older games, it's not just those three. There's a whole host of games that are played on on fight cade. Highly recommended checking it out. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is really nice. There's a chat in there. Most people are not jerks. You know, you. They, I went in there the other day, and there was like a philosophical discussion going right. on, like it was some <laughs> old IRC chat. Dude, uh, it was really. It was, it was not bad. It was really funny because, like, when I was there, there was some guy from Brazil who was just shitting on my Armika all day. It was like, this Armika's terrible, my Armika's so much better, and all these other people were like getting mad at him, like, shut up, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're probably like, I played you, but you, you're, you have, you're from Brazil, like, I, you beat me on your like two connection, like horrible ping or whatever like that. And he was like talking all the smack about my Mika or whatever like that. And then afterwards he challenged me to play, and I was like, okay, I'll play him. And then he just taught me a bunch of Armika stuff, and I thought that was super cool. <laughs> like. <laughs> He was legitimately a good player. Uh, like, you could totally tell he was a really good player, but you could also tell he was one of those people who've just been playing Alpha 3, like, all day. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I, like, I didn't even take it to heart. I was like, whatever. Like, you have a right to shit on my Mika because I was playing horribly that day, and I'd just forgotten everything. And I, I've told you before, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a volume player. Yeah, for sure. If I don't keep playing, I forget everything, and I don't remember how to do anything. So my Armika was just doing the same, like, four things over and over and over again. I'd forgotten all of my old tricks. Yeah. I'd forgotten all my old stuff. So, you know, it was really cool. And he showed me a bunch of stuff that I didn't even know about. Like, apparently Armika has a Kara SPD that's, like, super good. I didn't even know she had that, you okay. know, because no one was doing Kara yeah. throws back in back in the old Alpha 3 arcade days yeah, and stuff for like sure. that. Yeah. So it was actually pretty cool. But, dude, some of those guys are, like, really, like, he was being really loud and obnoxious, but, you know, I just, I couldn't blame him because I was doing so badly, so I was like, I deserve it. So then I played him and... That, the same thing happened to me. Some guy was dunking me and... He was being a jerk about it uh -huh, on stream. Uh -huh. So uh, I feel like the best way to counteract that is just just to be like cloyingly, sweetly nice <laughs> like, as much as possible. So I was like, "You're right. I'm terrible. I appreciate the lessons. Good games, friend. You know, whatever. <laughs> Kill him with kindness, man. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. the way it always works." Yeah. And he kept trying to troll, and then and then when I had to go, I was like, "Apologies. Unfortunately, I have to get back to work. I'd love to keep playing. This has been a blast. Maybe we can do it sometime uh -huh, again in the uh -huh. future." And he was, and he tried to be like, "Are you rich quitting?" And I was like, "I again. I'd love to play more. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just can't. I can't be here. If you're, you know, maybe we can ma match it up some other time. You know, yeah." And he was like, he just went away. That's it. You know, that's I, I. I told the story even before. You know that I beat. Um, I, I beat APOC at two Alpha 3 tournaments because he couldn't fight me because I was too nice, right? And then on AGSF2, the master troll of AGSF2, we got into a big argument, and he also was like, it's hard to argue with you because you're so nice about it. <laughs> yeah. Like that, so. You know, to this day, I diffuse Seth Killian's trolliness with my kindness. Because <laughs> if you guys didn't know, Seth Killian was the biggest jerk on ABSF2. He his whole goal was 
that guy who was so knowledgeable about the game and so smart that he would use that to troll you and make you feel bad and try to make you angry. <laughs> that was his whole goal. Genius. <laughs> you can see a little bit of, of, of you can see a little bit of that if you go back and read his old domination articles yeah, sure. and stuff like that. So yeah. But, so kill you. Yeah. <laughs> We used to have epic arguments about Cami versus Ryu and just Cami in general about how how I was like she's not that horrible and he's like she's trash she's trash oh, she's really? pointless right and the funniest thing about it is even though my Cami is like way better than it was before and I've even beaten Seth Killian like his Ryu and his Balrog with my Cami okay. I'm actually more on his side now. Right, right, <laughs> I right. Think Cammy's garbage in his team. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> I feel like even since I've known you, which is not that long, it's uh -huh. like maybe like eight years at most. Right. Um, oh, actually, that's pretty long. Yeah. Anyway, uh -huh. um, I feel like your your thoughts about Cammy have gone downhill. <laughs> like you, think, you think that she's worse now than you did probably. Like eight years yeah, ago. probably, probably. So, yeah. But, I mean, that, that's the thing is that she's she's good. She's really good. But um, it's just everybody else is so ridiculously good in that game. So, and the and the problem with Cami also, honestly, is just there's just some matchups like that you just don't have any right to win unless you know Jason Cole is still mad that he lost to Daigo. You know, otherwise I would never beat Jason Cole in that game. I wouldn't beat his old Sagat. I could, old beat, Sagat his, I could beat his Dalsum. But, Same here, friend. Yeah, but I couldn't. I would never have been able. I mean. There is a YouTube video of me beating Jason Cole's old Sagat with my Cami okay. from the Tournament of Legends that you can look up. That's true. One of the rare videos of me winning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like to, you know, like very non subtly throw that in there. You there can you look go. that up. There you go. But yeah, he was he was mad because he lost to Daigo and he felt like he should have beat Daigo. And so he was still a little on tilt when he played me uh, for sure. So yeah. That's too bad. Slash lucky. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's impressive remote though. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> um, Two line emote. Yep. Oh, um, all right. Anyway, what else is? I feel like there's something else that we were gonna talk about. Uh, I mean, we Maybe could not. talk more about some Splatoon or some Mario Maker stuff. Can you tell me what you think about my Mario Maker level? <laughs> Is it too is it too mean? Is I don't, it too gross? I don't think it's mean or gross. I actually think it's kind of poignant in a lot of way, though we definitely got one person who was upset about it on the YouTube comments. Understandably. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But I mean, dude, like I don't know anything about the Battle of Verdun. A lot of people don't know about the Battle of Verdun, so yeah. I actually feel like you are actually helping bring awareness to it a little bit. So I don't think it's as bad as it was made out to be. Let's just put it that way. So the genesis of it was it was just to basically. I've been listening to, or I was at the time, listening to a podcast called Hardcore History, mm. which is a really nice podcast that's done um, on a bunch of different topics. Same guy does a bunch of different topics. Right. One of them is World War One, and there's like I don't even know how many hours to this podcast. Twenty hours. It's like uh -huh. insane, and something like that many episodes and part of it was about the Battle of Verdun and I just was thinking about it I was like that was crazy that people did and not just that but like Battle of the Somme and Passion Dale and stuff right, right that just sounds like insane and like that could have been me but for a lucky a lucky generation you know what I mean like that just <laughs> right, luck that right. I'm here and not in mm -hmm, one of those mm -hmm. fields right so right. um I don't know I was thinking about it a lot and and around the same time Mario Maker was coming out and I was like thinking about that podcast a lot still and just sort of without really thinking about it too much put a tweet out about about putting them together right, right. and it just I don't know it turned out um, I, I do I do feel kind of like it went too far in a sense but at the same time uh, I thought it was worth trying to go that far <laughs> I don't know I feel kind of bad about it as you can probably tell but right, I also right. I also liked it so Dude, I was actually just surprised that my level turned out to be so hard. That like, Dude, it sounded super hard. I haven't tried it, but it, yeah, from your description. I mean, like, just because I thought it was kind of neat. I thought it would be cool, and someone actually tweeted me and and with a picture of my level and said this is about as fun as using T Hawk versus Blanca. <laughs> I was like, damn. 
and I saw I watched Mondo play it for two hours. I heard Jane Shea play it for two yeah, hours yeah. and stuff like that. It sounds really tough. Yeah, I mean the the problem with it is, I guess because I designed it, I kind of know the tricks to get around a lot of things. I mean, it is a problem that I can't beat it 100% of the time, you know, that well, I can beat it like maybe 50% of the time or something like that, but, you know, I'm going to try to make some simpler levels. Okay, so. okay, I, I'm cool. I'm going to try to make some simpler levels, so, yeah. Um, my next project is uh, the Eighth Circle of Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to make from all Dante, nine from circles? From Dante's Inferno. Do you need to make some all nine Some of them are really hard, though, because... You have like just people walking around. Actually, that, that might be easier. But you have to like, as I'm saying this, I feel like I've just sort of solved some of the problems <laughs> there from earlier. So anyway, I'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, it's gonna be the Inferno, Dante's yeah. Inferno. Dude, I I wanted to make a Gradia stage. I made a stage with three Bowsers on the super new Super Mario Brothers style. So they shoot like the, the the wave of fire and put you in a little cart and made it so that the only thing you could do is shoot little turtle shells into there to attack Bowser. And I made them all giant Bowser. So it's like literally you dodging firewalls everywhere and trying to throw turtle shells into the little hole over there and stuff like that. It takes 40 shells to kill one giant Bowser. Like, so that really? totally ruined my idea because you would have had to hit Bowser 120 times. Like, regular Bowser takes 20 shells. Super Bowser takes, like, 40 shells. And I was just, I was sad that I wasn't able to do the stage that I want. Even 20 shells for regular Bowser would be way too many to yeah, sit there and toss them. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, you, I could do it with fireballs instead, but then it's, like, a little bit easier to kill them. But maybe that's what I should try, yeah. but... Huh. Interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, it's really interesting because, like, I've been talking to people about this, and they're, like, really sad most people aren't making just normal old Mario levels. And I was like, the hardest thing about it is you make a normal Mario level, and if it's beatable in five minutes, like, people will beat it and never think about it again. Yeah, and it'll be totally like, lost. Yeah, so I just feel like... Like, going into it, I knew that 90% of the levels were going to be trolls or auto-runs. Yeah. You know, the auto-running Those are really popular. Like the auto-run ones... Some of them are very cool, to be fair. Yeah. Some of them are cool, but I think they get a lot of high rating because they're, like, easy to beat. And so it's just, like, you get an experience without having to use any effort. So I feel like a little bit of that laziness kind of promotes those stages and stuff like that, so... On one of them, I was like, screw this. I'm going to jump around. I'll figure this out. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> like if you, like on on the one that I tried it on, if you miss one of the one of the little uh, platforms, it's mm -hmm. like on a on a chain or whatever, you know. Oh what yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, then it's gone. Oh and then you okay, just, okay, you're okay, okay, okay. It, which was kind of disappointing. I feel like those things should have the option of being beaten by moving around. That right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still haven't tried Wizard's level, which I've heard has taken some people like five to six. I tried Raft's level. I have not yet. Oh, I man, not you yet. really yeah. should. You'd like yeah. it. Yeah, I need, to, I need to go and bust in all those levels in there in any case. So. But um, I, I saw some people mentioning in the chat, do you even want to acknowledge the, the Colin Cowherd thing? <laughs> That's right. I haven't watched it because I just don't need to. I, I, it'll make me mad, so I just don't it's even It's not even it. a thing to get mad about, I feel. I, I just, I think it's kind of amusing. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, okay. like, sort of dawdling old person amusing. You know how, like, old people get away with saying stupid stuff? It's like, oh, <laughs> man, what a... That cute old person, you know? Dude, it sounds like it's one of those things that you see at, like, 12... Like, at 3 o'clock at night that's, like, shot in this really grungy studio, and they're, like, you know, really militant people or something like that, you know? I, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like that. It's... So, basically, he just tells... It's a, it's a joke story that he tells about like the champion of esports which i believe he called e-gaming which i thought was genius <laughs> uh where like the champion of e-gaming no, i like, would really <laughs> like it to grow because then it would be big e-gaming <laughs> <laughs> good job i like it uh, okay so the champion of e-gaming like go like leaves the venue and goes across the street where he lives which is his mom's house oh god and he goes upstairs to his room where no girls have ever been and he eats a hot pocket and he watches star it has a star wars figurine or something and yeah, but let's be fair. Hanzo is he bites he bites into the hot pocket. Yeah, but like I said, Hanzo was not the pro typical gamer, right? <laughs> I mean, so even though 
you know. <laughs> no Mountain Dew mentioned this part. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. okay, fair enough, fair enough. I just thought it was funny. Because it's so, it's... Not, not in the sense that it's like an actual funny joke, but in mm-hmm. the sense that the person telling it... The person telling it is the joke. Do you know what I mean? Like those. Yeah, like those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. That's how it is. Right. And right. I thought that was very funny. And I assume that that's not done on purpose. But nevertheless, I, I find it really, right. really amusing. It's not something to be overly concerned about. Like if anything, it's a if you're if you if you have the agenda as many of us do of promoting video games as competition, uh, it's not something to be concerned about. It's a sign that we're doing our job well. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. So I mean, don't. If someone's talking about it, you yeah. know you're doing something right. And, and, yeah. he, and he played. He played uh, the Woshige. Why? What are you saying? Up full, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. From Evo, and he called it the nerd version of the band is on the field, which is the sports version of if. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, this is a famous moment from Cal football. Right. 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 Uh, one of the most famous certainly football one of plays. Famous. Period ever, sure. right? For so sure. yeah, but yeah, I, just, uh, I thought it was fine. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I just don't even want to give it any more play. You know, I don't even like people are saying that they haven't heard about it, and that's good. I'd rather have it keep that way. Obviously, we're in very different circles. Yeah. Like most, or maybe not most, but well, maybe most people who play video games and watch video games don't care about Colin Coward. Mm-hmm. He's just some sports announcer guy. He didn't like play football or anything. He's right, just an right. announcer. And, He's, he's had a successful radio show for many years, that's yeah. all. And it sounds like to me he's just kind of going the Kimmel route right now, uh-huh. just trying to generate noise and stuff like that, talking about it and everything. So, Which, I, which might work. Again, his audience is not the same mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. the audience. Like, I, I would imagine that many of the people who he played that radio clip to thought it was hilarious. And it's whatever. I mean, let them have their fun. They're only going to be around <laughs> for another 20 years and then... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not that old. He's not that old. Uh, oh man. Anyway, we're doing we're doing fine. Video yeah, games. We're doing fine. We're doing esports are doing doing fine. Look, I'm gonna say this much right now. <sighs> we're doing way better than even I ever thought we would be at this point in time. If yeah, you talked to too. me like me three too. years ago, four or five years ago, and told me where we are now with the FGC, I would have been like, dude, you're, you got to think realistically, man. There ain't going to be no $120,000 year-end Capcom Cup. Capcom will never help us, you know? It seemed reasonable. <laughs> yeah, so we're a lot further along than even I would have ever thought. So yeah. you can even count me as one of the people who's surprised sure. by surprised. the success of, of how FGC is going and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yes, I, I already mentioned Team Stickbug, Harukin. So, but yeah. Esports. So, Esports. Oh A sports. Dude, I, was it in Korea that they show? Was it Korea or somewhere they were showing like that they have this new serial drama or something like that that was called like I'm dating a Dota player or something like that. <laughs> I feel like that was. Uh, I mean, Disney's coming out with the show about a former esports player, right? Oh, I'm in love with a Dota player. Apparently, is like something that's going on or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, I yeah, know Disney's doing it. Yeah, I know. Even Disney has done shows with like I think the cat's been on there too on a couple of Di- on, on yeah? a Disney show or something like that I think wow yeah so that's awesome yeah so there you go there you go so oh yeah CSGO is gonna be on TBS oh yeah that's in right in fact I that's think right. that was what promoted or what, what prompted this whole yeah the Colin Cowherd yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I'm really curious to see how they're gonna do that I'm really curious to see because I remember a long time ago they did they, I think they did, MLG did Halo on ESPN2 or something like that. Mm. And I didn't like the production that they did, yeah. but I mean, that was a few years ago, and, and esports has advanced so yeah. far compared to how it used to be. So Yeah, I, I, mean, I can think of a few examples where there were video game competitions on TV, and I thought they mm-hmm. sucked, like categorically, mm-hmm, were mm-hmm. dumb. Right. Um, and I guess everybody else must have thought the same way because they went off the air. But, <laughs> um, 
Well, you know, as you said, lots of things have changed. I think I think one of the big things that's changed is that now it's it's much easier to fill an audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for people yeah, who yeah. want to see it. It's not it's mm-hmm. not the case for the old TV episodes where. You know, you have to instruct the audience to cheer because they don't know about it or they don't care about <laughs> right, it very much. Right, yeah. They got free tickets to watch something at like Universal Studios. Or right, whatever. right. Uh-huh. Um, now you can really fill a big stadium with with people who bought tickets yeah, and they want to be, be there. there. Yeah, they like they care about CS:GO or whichever game, and they want to be there. And that I really feel like that by itself makes a gigantic mm-hmm, difference mm-hmm. to to have a real crowd and not some canned. TV nonsense. Yeah, yeah. I really feel that, like, like you can you can make the production different because of it. The players, um, you can deal with the players differently right, because of right. it. Of course, the, the crowd itself gets to have a much better time because of it, and people watching get to experience what the crowd feels. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really I feel like that's a big part of watching sports. You they often show you the crowd because yeah, like yeah. if something bad happens, they show you the girl who has a little tear. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, if, uh-huh. and if something good happens, they show the crowd that's going nuts. Like right, yeah, as yeah, the yeah. person at home, uh-huh. that influences you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So no. now that can happen, I think, for things like yeah, CSGO. I, so that's cool. Even when I was watching the Heroes of the Dorm, like you could feel the difference because the crowd got excited about stuff and you can it was a much better realization of what's going on i mean that's the reason why the daigo parry moment video went viral because Big it's part. it's a perfect example because if it was just the parry and then it ended like yeah. people who like gives, if it was direct game footage right yeah who gives a shit who cares, right? yeah exactly but when you see the crowd go crazy and then you hear Seth Killian with the really perfect voiceover yeah. on there yeah that that's kind of what sold the whole entire thing so yeah, man, I'm yeah. with you. But that said, I there are some companies who I think have maybe not learned that lesson or have learned it sort of late. Uh, I mean, I just got kicked out of Riot, Riot's thing for League of Legends <laughs> right. thing for cheering too loudly. That was only like a couple of years ago. It wasn't that long ago. And, and Riot has changed it, and they, it's something that they can do because they fill stadiums. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can deal with it differently. It's not just a TV thing anymore. Um, but I, I, I sort of worry that TBS will fall into that trap. It just depends on who they have, but I feel like right, they have right. they have the opportunity to make it a, a good experience, a, yeah. a good product. So. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Do you know when it's going to be on or anything like that? Okay. I know nothing okay. about it. Oh man. But yeah, no. I mean, it's exciting times for competitive gaming. So hopefully, we just keep growing and things keep going. So see how it goes. It's like I said. I I would have thought we would have hit the bubble by now, but with Street Fighter V coming out and stuff. Oh, that's right. We forgot to completely talk about TwitchCon. We did. We did. We meant, <laughs> we meant to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to say about TwitchCon? We had no results stuff going there. I mean, uh, it sounded like there was a lot of people there. I saw a tweet from somebody that said that there was like 20,000 people who showed up or something like that, which is quite a bit of people. Um, quite a bit. Yeah, I heard it was largely kind of a like fans going there to try to meet their favorite streamer, a, 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 a big portion of it that was a sense, lot yeah. of that. I mean, I saw guys like Eduardo tweet a lot of like pictures of, wow, I got to meet Eduardo yeah. and stuff like that. So I saw a lot of those kind of things. Um, but I mean, the most important thing to me, obviously for us, is that there was a build of Street Fighter V there. Mm. And just judging from a lot of things that Maximilian was talking about, there's a lot of nerfs to the characters like Ryu couldn't do stand strong into sweep anymore he couldn't do jab into strong anymore Cammy couldn't do any jabs into strongs and lots of little things like that so um i mean someone actually i i retweeted some of max's tweets and someone actually had the accurate response is like you know you know you're just pr- propagating a bunch of rage over a beta like, the game's not even out yet. Like, you can't even be mad about this kind of stuff, right? And, you know, he's absolutely right. That, that's yeah. 100% legit. But, you know, I'm really curious to see how it's going to go. Um, I, I really liked how a lot of the characters felt in the beta. You know, oddly enough, Cammy was the one that I felt the least. Yeah. Uh, I felt like needed a little bit more. But, I mean, I'm just curious to see, you know, what their goal is, how they're trying to do it. Like, they said uppercuts were going to be crush countered on Whiff now. Yeah. Which, dude, uppercuts are going to be almost pointless <laughs> it feels like i feel like that's a very interesting idea yeah all the other street fighter games have invincible moves you know what i mean like like there's some invincible option mm-hmm, that you have mm-hmm. even in third strike where dragon punches were actually kind of crappy and yeah. so many characters didn't even have them 
um, supers were more accessible as invincible options. And in any case, you had a toward or a down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, you always had something. Right, right, right. Um, so I feel like to have a game where many characters don't have good reversals, super takes a long time to build, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you get punished hugely if you do if you're invincible option. It's just a very different style of game that would result, yeah. I feel. And I think that that's not necessarily bad. In fact, I, I want... I know you do too. Well, you want it to be its own game, right? Right. If if that is what is part of its own game about mm -hmm. it, I think that's totally yeah. fine myself. I guess the only concern I have really is that it might slow the pace down a little bit. It'll be very much easier to just kind of want to turtle up. You know what I mean? Because uppercutting is going to be such a big punishment now. I guess I feel like I expect the opposite because if defense is poor then I expect lots of either oh, offense right, or movement. Yeah. Like, like, like one of those two things. Rush down death. Like, yeah, rush down yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if, if, you, if there's a zoner, um, and indications are that in fact there may be a zoner, is what I've, rumors are on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, then maybe that'll be a movement-based thing. Like maybe it'll be more Marvel, where it's not so much about having invincible reversals, right. it's more about just like Avoid the pressure situation. or avoidance. Right, yeah, one of those right, two right, things, right. which is... In my, in my mind, I feel like that's totally fine. There, there are plenty of fighting games that don't have many invincible options. Mm -hmm. Most 3D games are like that. Right. MKX only has armor. Right, MK9 right, right. and Justice only had invincible moves. Just a couple of, of exceptions <laughs> outside of the wake-up game. So when, it, when you're playing neutral, there was no Dragon Punch to worry about. Like, you're do, just playing... Do you see any Goros... Do you see any Goros use that da -da move to beat all the armor wake-ups? I saw... <laughs> Forever King do it against who was it? Maybe DJT in okay. whatever major he won with Goro. Uh -huh. He did do a meaty oh, okay, okay. three down three. Right, right, right. Like one time. Because that thing is so fast. That it's thing really like good. beats all armor moves. And right only now. cancelable on hit. Yeah. But you know, it'll Options be it'll be interesting. See, the one thing. Okay, look. So we made fun of TwitchCon a, l a, f a few times beforehand or whatever like that. Sounds like it was a decent success. And, you know, th what it turned out to be was more like panels from the streamers talking about, like, here's some strategies on how you want to stream. You know, here's what I do. Kind of like, here's some technology for streaming. So lots of really cool, useful things. But yeah. I do have to say that them having a Hall of Fame induction was kind of silly. I didn't know about that. Yeah. They what? did like some Twitch Hall of Fame thing, and they inducted some people into a Twitch Hall of Fame. Hmm. <laughs> and to me, that's a little, a little excessively kind of thing. Hmm. But you know, I, I don't know about that quite yet. So I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. What? I didn't watch very much of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me let me clarify, just for the sake of being up front. I didn't watch any of it. Um, but I did see a couple of screenshots of uh, the Kappa face guy oh, yeah, 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 on yeah, stage. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Was that him getting inducted into Hall of Fame? Is that what that was? Oh, or? I have no idea. Maybe. 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 Um, maybe. But he didn't, obviously, he didn't look exactly the same as the picture. Right. Like, right, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It always looked exactly the same. But it was still like jarring to me almost like, I, did, <laughs> I felt weird seeing him that like, he was a human -uh. yeah. <laughs> Don't, that's strange uh, yeah. anyway uh, but um, yeah yeah I, I the only thing that i did watch very briefly was the women in esports panel just to see oh okay 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 um it seemed like the talk was going fine but predictably the chat was horrendous oh yeah that's right yeah i heard about that you know, i heard about that so that's really all that I watched, to be frank. Uh, I part of it was that I didn't. I was. I would have gone to TwitchCon, but for some other obligations, and those other right. obligations were why I didn't watch most of TwitchCon. <laughs> so. Right, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So, yeah, it was really interesting. It was really interesting. So, but I'm um, curious to see what they're gonna do with TwitchCon next year. See if it's gonna continue to grow. If well, if they started out at 20k, that's insane. Yeah, I what mean, that, this is an incredible number to start out with. Yeah, I gotta see. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I swear I saw someone like Fishsticks tweet that out, okay, or something like that. But I could be wrong. Again, this is. Well, I saw pictures from it, and it seemed like it was very well attended. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, good job with them. You know, yeah. for, for putting on an event. Yep. Cool. Well. Uh, no okay. 
Okay, now I think we're good. I think we may be good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, again, uh, some... I hope that people stop doing the esports video game uniform. Can, can that stop? Oh, right. Your, your favorite jeans and t-shirt and jack and sports jacket or whatever. You know, like it dismayed me. What's that? There's a tweet from Dasset Bro where he said, Actually, I kind of like. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Did you see yeah. that? Uh, when it turns out he likes the uniform. He was like, he's, I like think, oh, it's, he's like, I think this could be a really cool trend that can spread or something like that. Yeah. Something. I mean, he's not that young anymore. I met him; he was like a teenager still. So, right, right. right. Um, I feel like that's been happening for a long time in the video game industry. Like, that's not a new trend. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. ten years old at mm -hmm, least, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe longer. Um, but I, so I, I wonder if it's if it is the the bowler hat and nice slacks of our generation because that was the cool thing to wear 60, 70 years ago. <laughs> it was just what you wore. You know, everybody else is wearing it, right? So let's, uh, here we go. But then other people grew up and they were like, screw grandpa's stuffy old hat and slacks. So I'm going to wear whatever other stuff. I wonder if that's our bowler hat and slacks. Is it, is it, is it the hoodie and the zip up hoodie? It's and just, it's, 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 jeans it's, and... it's the lazy way to look fancy, basically, to try to look professional. I feel like it's intentionally not professional enough looking like yeah no like no it, that's absolutely right, right. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, yeah it's like uh -huh. oh uh -huh. sure i'm professional hence the jacket but at the same time i'm just underneath it i'm still yeah cool. if you take off the jacket i'm still, I'm still cool. a normal dude yeah. you know <laughs> that's I'm what not, it is yeah it's, yeah uh-huh pretty much i don't know i so. think it's silly i think it's silly <laughs> but um i also wonder if the people who were now doing video game stuff are just going to be doing it their whole lives like is dj week going to be doing his current role for like the next 50 years Maybe. Maybe. I don't maybe. really see why not, unless he doesn't want to anymore. So, like, maybe we'll entrench, maybe our generation will, like, entrench ourselves. And, like, it'll always be DJ Wheat until the year 2100. And it'll always be Ultra Chen. <laughs> Dude, now I'm going to go to Evo in a t-shirt with the, with the sports coat now. I'm going to do that. I mean, it would be, th that would be funny in the same way that... Colin Cowherd's diatribe was funny. Right, where, yeah. Where, where you're the joke. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I'm used to it, so, you know, it works. So. <laughs> I like Weed a lot, don't, don't get me wrong. He's a very nice guy. I hope he sticks around. Just thoughts. Any case, a um, lot of people have been asking us if we're going to be do. We haven't done any events recently in a while. We're going to be doing SCR that's coming up, and then we'll also be doing Canada Cup as well at the end of the month. So, yeah, look forward to that's that. That's our October. Yep, pretty much good stuff. So, all right. Okay, I guess that's about it. Yep. Um. Yeah. Um. Dude, I had something, and I forgot it. Never mind. Okay. Later. Super super non awkward. Very You're smooth, the best, James. Great smooth outro. Smooth exit here. So, so now I just have to make it even more awkward. People are like, wait, wait, what am I trying to do here? It's, it's the. It's the no, no, I'm trying to. Oh, oh, oops, oops. Oh, I'm trying to do. Oh no, my secret is giving away. Oh, Nobody would have guessed. Do, uh, okay. Uh, yeah.